welcome to the special series, Science in the Spotlight. In this series, you look at science, scientific discovery and innovation. Today we're with Rohanatha, a marine biologist with a great passion for his work, the mysterious and beautiful world of coral reefs. Now, Rohan, for most of us landlubbers, coral reefs are these fantastic images, silent images we see on a science program on television. When did you know that that was where you wanted to work, where your goal was? Uh, in truth, it was just a series of uh, small accidents that got me to working on, on coral reefs. I, just before I did my master's, um, as a little celebration of having finished my, 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 my bachelor's, I took a small trip to the Gulf of Kutch and um, we went off on a little boat somewhere into a, in one, a deserted island and uh, in the intertidal patches there we saw, I saw my first cuddles. And um, they were fascinating for me, it was a, it was a fascinating cuddle. Love it for a second. It was love at first sight. And I suspect that perhaps the first time that I knew that I really wanted to work on reefs was when I uh, went into the reefs in the Andalans. And the Gulf of Kutch reefs are beautiful, but what I saw in the Andalans was absolutely stunning. It was, you know, you, you put your face into the water and you see this amazing diversity of, of, of creatures that, uh, you know, and you, then you say, well, you know, what better place to, uh, you know, to build a career? No. What are coral reefs? What is coral? The coral is really a very primitive organism. It's a, it's a cylindrate, and perhaps the one, the, the cylindrate that most people will be familiar with is a sea anemone. Right. Uh, the coral, uh, like the sea anemone, is, you know, has, has many polyps, and it has, uh, unlike the sea anemone, it has a skeleton of calcium carbonate. And many of these, uh, these uh, little organisms will form a colony, so it's a colonial organism, um, which then grows, and in the, 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 the skeleton of calcium carbonate grows. And when it grows over very large areas, it creates a biogenic structure, which we then call the coral reefs. Your work is right now being done in the Lakshadweep Islands. When did you first visit there, and what were your impressions at that time? I first went to the Lakshadweep, I think it was sometime in uh, 1996. And of course, by, at this time, Cuba was just about entering into the country, the, the ability to actually um, you know, go down to any depth and, and look at, at the systems was just about be beginning to be available. So that's, it's around this time that I went to the, uh, um, to the Lakshadweep and that's when I first saw the system there. What I saw was, was really, really quite ex exceptional because these were systems that you know, you have these very, very clear waters um, and with a coral diversity that was unbelievable. It was, it's a, this was my first impression of the, of the luxury, yeah. You went first in 96. You went back again a couple of years later after the El Nino effect. Well, what were the differences you saw there, really? What, what, what was that about? So I was in, in, in East Africa uh, in early 1998 when we first started seeing the first signs of bleaching in some of the coral reefs in, along the East African coast. Now, bleaching is a phenomenon where um, the symbiotic relationship between coral and, and uh, the dinoflagellate that lives within the coral, that breaks down. And the coral gets rid of this symbiotic algae and the coral turns white. Okay? So, and this normally happens in every summer when the temperatures rise by a few degrees. But in 1998, what we saw were large stretches of coral uh, bleaching. Okay, why does the coral need the algae? Well, so the, the, the coral and the algae live in a, in a tight symbiotic relationship. The, uh, where the algae provides 90% um, of the nutrition that the coral requires to survive. Through photosynthesis? Through photosynthesis, okay. right? Mm -hmm. So the coral is capable of feeding on its own, and it does feed on its own, but almost 
90% of, of everything that it, that it requires for its nutrition is actually got by this photosynthetic algae. So it's actually a very, it's essential for the survival of the, of, of the coral. So that's, um, when this relationship breaks down, it, rela it breaks down under, under various conditions of stress, uh, and temperature is one of them, okay. the coral turns white. Okay. So uh, we saw this in, in East Africa, and I knew that there was nobody in India looking at the reefs uh, uh, back then. So I rushed back from East Africa, and I looked at a few reefs th th that I could. Uh, I looked at the Gulf of, Gulf of Kach, I looked at the Gulf of Manar, and then I went to the Lakshadweep. Uh, just before the monsoon, and what I saw there was uh, was was shocking because within the span of a couple of weeks, you had these beautiful, vibrant coral reefs turning completely white in front of my eyes. I couldn't survey them beyond May because the monsoons came uh, came along. And the next time that I went there was sometime in December, and between 70 to 90 percent of the reefs were completely dead. And this was linked to the warming caused by it the was linked to the to the warming uh, caused yes. by the El Nino, yes. which is an ocean current which I'm sure most people are familiar with by now. Um, it starts off on the um, the American coast, in New Mexico, Some, somewhere very far right. away. Yes. That's right, and it, some, oh. sometime around d December okay. normally, and then works its way across the Pacific and into the Indian Ocean by around April or May. This is a natural phenomenon, yeah. but what we have been noticing is that when coupled with the changes in, uh, in, o with, uh, in ocean currents as a result of, of global warming, the intensity of these El Nino, El Nino events, as well as its frequency, has been uh, increasing much, much more in recent years. When you went again to the Lakshadweep, though, you discovered perhaps that things were not as bad as you might have feared. That's right. So what? Um, you know, the narrative that was emerging from different parts of the world yeah. uh, after 98 was, uh, was a fairly depressing picture and a fairly familiar picture yeah. or of um, systems that were overfished okay. just because people live yes. around coral reefs and derive a lot of their fisheries from coral reefs. And after the uh, 1998 bleaching event, many of the reefs of the world were just not being able to recover. They that. just died. They did not recover. They did not recover. Uh, there, there were systems that were recovering, but the, the most familiar narrative was one in which the reefs just died and did not recover at all. And so when I went back to the luxury reef, I expected that's, that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm just going to be documenting another extinction. Um, you know, and uh, what I found in contrast was that over the, la over the next six to seven years, although there were reefs that were doing fairly badly, there was a very mixed picture of response. So some reefs really recovered really well okay. and uh, some of them that remained really relatively stable through time and then there are some that decline but for me what was uh, what was more surprising was the, was this diversity of responses mm -hmm. that the, that the luxury reefs were behaving were, were actually misbehaving they were not behaving <laughs> okay. according to the, to yes, the standard yes. narrative okay. that we were hearing from yes. the rest of the world yeah so. why was this so that's what I've been trying to find out for the last 17 years. So, you know, <laughs> uh, so I've been going okay. back pretty much every year okay. just, to, just to see what these, what these reefs are doing, how the, the coral is doing and how the, how, yes. you know, how the rest of the ecosystem okay. is doing. And what's emerging is, a, is uh, an interesting set of trends which we are now trying to validate. Okay. We're trying to understand the mechanisms that underlie those trends. But in order to understand that, perhaps you know, we just take a step back and see if the, the the entire complexity of the coral reef can be essentially boiled down to this epic battle that, that takes place in the reef between coral on the one hand and large macroalgae on the other hand. And both of them are essentially trying to get, a, get some space, uh, you know, fighting for space on the reef. When uh, typically, you know, in a healthy coral reef, the coral typically wins, right? And it's, it's, it typically wins because it is it's got a bit of help, and it's got a bit of help largely from herbivorous fishes, okay. which just eat the algae and so don't allow... Keeps the algae down so that the, the coral down. gets a better chance. So the coral gets a better chance. Mm. And uh, what tends to happen in reefs that are overfished is that many of the herbivores are removed, and then when the coral die, the algae very quickly take over, okay. and then uh, the coral can't get back.
In trying to understand why, uh, I began to look at, at the fish communities and I found that actually for, uh, you know, for a place which has huge human densities, the fish communities were doing really well. Well, okay. okay. And that naturally got me thinking about uh, you know, how uh, the human communities yes. relate to the, to, the, to the reefs. And that's when I realized that given the fact that the Lakshadweep has among the, the highest human population densities in rural India, mm. 2,000 people per square kilometer, that's a lot of people, yes. and all of them are dependent on fish, uh, they were not fishing the reefs too much. Okay. And so the Lakshadweep has a strange, uh, it's one of those strange situations mm. where you have a high human uh, 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 population that lives around these very, very productive coral reefs, but don't fish the reefs too much. And the, the result of that is that the reefs have now got a really healthy coral, uh, uh, coral reef fish community, which when the, the, the system is, is subject to these occasional diebacks, um, they respond, they're able to respond in fairly complex and uh, quite resilient okay. ways.